let's cover a few helpful advanced features. And the first one may be not news to you. You can easily tell Data Pump, hey, Data Pump, please give me all my SQL statements. So you set SQL file equals a file name in your imp par file, and then you kick off Data Pump import. Afterwards, instead of importing and creating the objects, Data Pump gives you all the code statements in that SQL file. So you get the create users, the grants, the quotas, of course, also the tables, the index statements, and so on. And if you'd like to, you can also use exclude or include to just get a subset of the information. So that is straightforward. But what if you would like to program with Data Pump? And you would like to use the PL SQL API Data Pump secretly uses in the backend. Now, of course, you can study the documentation and find it out by yourself, but there's an easier way. So let's say, simple example here, I would like to know how to use Data Pump API and setting the parallel degree here to eight. So it's easy in the documentation. If I look it up, DBMS Data Pump set parallel and then job handle and the degree. Okay, simple example, but I want more. And how do I get that? You take a test environment and you set SQL trace event 10,046 level four. Level four here is important because otherwise you would get way too much information. We don't need that. Level four is fine. Then you run on your test environment, you import. And afterwards you check for the trace file, which is associated with that SQL trace. So it's the trace file or one of the trace files in your trace directory, which has no background process named in the trace files name. And in that trace file, you find now how data pump opens the job. It starts the job at first, then how it adds a file. And finally, what we were looking for, how data pump with the API sets the parallel degree. So with that, you can use these code fragments, change it for your own needs, and then reuse them in your own programming. So that's very neat and very straightforward, and in many cases, easier than reading the documentation and trying to create the procedures by yourself. Then let us go to another topic. And the other topic would be, we would like to import thousands or hundreds of thousands of partitions and subpartitions. And if you ever done that, you know, it takes a lot of time to create these objects. So what could we do? We could create the partitions in advance with a script and then use table exists action and set it to append. That's good, but it's slow. It's still slow. So how can we use that trick and then make it run faster? And here we need to tell data pump that parameter data option equals trust existing table partitions. Because if you avoid that, then data pump still runs a check for every partition and tries to match that with the information in the dump file. But when you tell data pump with data option trust existing table partitions, it will not do this extra check and then it runs significantly faster in such cases. And then let's go to multi-tenant. As you know from our previous seminar, you can have up to 252 PDBs, or if you have an uh, engineered system, up to 4,000 and something PDBs. And if you run data pump now in some of them in parallel, there's a good choice that you, we called it the noisy neighbor syndrome, that you either disturb uh, somebody else, or that is even worse, that you're depleting the resources of the CDB. Because by default, the number of data pump jobs running concurrently in one PDB is 100. Now let's say you have 200 PDBs. You can do the math what that means if you start in all PDBs at the same time a data pump export uh, and you have a high parallel degree and you request a lot of uh, resources. If you set this parameter to auto, it takes still 50% of the sessions, which may be very high. So in case of such environments, it's a good best practice to limit the number of concurrent data pump jobs in a PDB 
it doesn't have to be two necessarily. It could be eight or something like that, but much less than the default if you have a lot of PDBs. Otherwise, as you see in the corner of the slide, you may receive this 93939 one error. Also, another noisy neighbor syndrome with data pump is then too many parallel workers in a data pump job, and that depleting the resource of the CDB. So you can also restrict the parallel degree in a data pump job with max data pump parallel per job. And the default here is also 50. So it's relatively high or auto means 50% of the number of sessions again, which is even higher in most cases. So if you had it, uh, issues with that, or if you think there is a need to restrict that, use that parameter option. <clears throat> 